and I did not compare notes, but it was interesting that he started out um, early in his remarks with the definition of the origins of the word entrepreneur, because I was kind of thinking along the same lines. Of course, he alluded to the fact that it is from the French, and I guess another way to a uh, more standard English definition of an entrepreneur is an individual who is willing to launch or to take the risk for a new venture or enterprise. They're willing to accept full responsibility for the outcome of those efforts. Very important uh, key point. And then hopefully if all works well, receive profits commensurate with the effort and the risk that they took. But probably my favorite really down-to-earth practical definition is one that I heard earlier in the year. Uh, I was on a panel with several other entrepreneurs uh, at an event, and one of them said that in their mind, an entrepreneur is an individual who is willing to work 80 hours for him or herself rather than 40 hours for someone else. So why is that a good deal? Because you think, okay, the math doesn't sound like it would work out uh, very well in the favor of the person, but why would someone feel that this is a good thing to work more for some for themselves than for someone else? Because the total hours are obviously more. And it really comes down to why are entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship is important to us, particularly in this time in our history. A lot of things going on, as we have all experienced, especially over the past several years. Uh, larger companies are downsizing and are creating fewer jobs. In fact, businesses over, with over 500 employees are a net loss in terms of jobs to the economy, whereas your smaller businesses are a net gain to the economy. Uh, not only the creation of jobs is an issue, but the quality of those jobs, jobs that allow people to make a decent living and to be able to pursue their dreams. Over the past couple months, uh, the coming jobs war uh, Jim Clifton, who is the chairman of the Gallup Peak folks, you know, survey and, and research uh, folks, uh, has authored this book. And in a nutshell, what the book is saying is that whoever creates the most jobs and the best jobs in the global economy wins the economic gain in the global economy. So if the U.S. wants to maintain its edge and continue to excel in a now universal or a world economy, we're going to have to create jobs. And he goes on to say that the creation of those jobs are gonna rely primarily on new business starts and smaller businesses that are expanding their operations. And I would throw in my two cents that that would also include creating one's own job, even if they don't necessarily take on other employees in the foreseeable future. A lot of these larger companies are also scaling back the operations that they have under their roof. You know, they want to focus on the one thing that they were created to do, the one good, the primary line of goods or services. All the support functions like HR, accounting and finance, the public relations marketing, that's all being contracted, contracted out, which is another reason why they're downsizing. But hint, hint, in while they're contracting out those functions, that's an entrepreneurship opportunity for those who have those particular skills and background, why entrepreneurship is important to take on some of those functions. But there's a broader reason too. Uh, people are just seeking a tradition, uh, an option or an alternative to the traditional job path. You know, we were taught get a good education, get a job, and then you would work for whatever entity for 30 years, 40 years, and then you would get a retirement and live happily ever after. But people are seeing, especially over the past, I would say, quarter of a century, a trend where their friends, their relatives, their colleagues, maybe even themselves, have worked for a company for 25, 30 years, and just before they're getting ready to retire, the company lays them off. And so in that, it's like, okay, what can I do to control my own destiny? Even if I don't give up the job just right now, what can I do to position myself so that if that time comes, I have a, a B plan already in place and going. And that's where entrepreneurship comes in, especially with a lot of younger folks, but even with not so younger folks, with the more mature of us. People are looking at entrepreneurship as an alternative to even 
not, I won't even go into the judicial job market if they're younger, they're, they go to school so that they can learn how to be entrepreneurs and learn about business so that they can apply those skills immediately for themselves. Or they will uh, keep in mind that at some point I may do a job, but it's only for me to learn what I need to learn about business, either what to do or in some cases what not to do so that I can apply that to my enterprise. Whole different mindset. Also, I think it's important that entrepreneurship does offer options to all of us because, you know, in the economics and in uh, land use planning, at once upon a time I thought I was going to be an, an urban planner and life intervene, but there's this term called highest and best use. What is the most bang for your buck can you get for a particular use? And if you think of it in terms of economics, not everybody is designed to be a worker. You know, there are people who maybe have a natural tendency to be entrepreneurial, or maybe with a little encouragement and training, they can de further develop those skills. So when you think about it, it would make sense to offer entrepreneurship and support it as a career choice because those persons who are truly entrepreneurial, it's the highest and best use of their skills and talents to have them pursue that, rather than trying to force them into a mold. In the corporate world, they can create their own uh, mold, and we all are better off because that option was available and the environment was there available for them to support them to use their highest and best gift. In closing, I just would like to say that, of course, the U.S. Small Business Administration, or the SBA, we are an agency of the federal government. We've been around since 1953. So even President Eisenhower, before small business became kind of hip to talk about, thought about small business really is the backbone of the economy. And the U.S. economy would be better off if we have something to support small businesses in creation and their expansion. And that's what we're all about. In a nutshell, we're the three C's. We provide counseling and training to help educate and to uh, uh, cons uh, provide consultation services to not only people who think about starting a business or in the process of starting, but even for existing businesses. The second C is capital. We help people access capital through loan guarantees for commercial loans, as well as provide uh, funding to organizations that provide micro loans or smaller uh, loan amounts, especially for businesses such as your solopreneurs, your home-based businesses. And then the third seed contracting. Uh, for those businesses that would like to do business with the federal government, we have a variety of programs and resources to support that. Of course, if you haven't had a chance, check out our website, uh, www.sba.gov. As was mentioned earlier, we do have a table here today with more information on our programs and resources. And we invite you to take a visit and take a look at what we have to offer during the course of the day. With that, I, I thank, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here today. And I wish you a day of a lot of learning and, and growth and making new connections that can help everybody move forward in their entrepreneurial dreams. Thank you.